Number one, a bank pays uh, depositors a 2% interest rate compounded semi-annually. Let P represent an initial deposit and let T represent the number of years that the deposit is in the bank. The expression P times 1 plus 0.02 hundredths over 2 to the 2T can be used to determine the account balance after T years. Which expression accurately reflects the annual interest rate? So we know after T years we have this expression here. And if I want to know the actual annual interest rate, what percent we're actually getting, we have to clean up the exponent. So we need to compute here 1 plus 0.02 over 2 to the second power. So this is really 1.01 squared. That's what I want to figure out. That's truly the base of my exponential function. By using the power to a power property, I can manipulate that exponent there by bringing that squared in. So what do we get? Well, on my calculator, I'm going to type in 1.01 squared and get that's my base, 1.0201. So 1.0201 to the t times p. That's my justification there. So the actual interest rate is 2.01% if I'm compounding it semi-annually. That's the effective rate that we get. Two, the amount of, uh, the amount of a certain element that remains after d days can be determined using the expression p of d equals 100 times 0.5 to the d. Write an equivalent expression for p of h, the amount of a certain element remaining after h hours. So I want to switch from days to hours here. So first let's think about this. If I'm losing 50% every day, that's what this is saying right now, I'm losing 50% every day, should I be losing more each hour, more than 50% each hour, or less than 50% each hour? I should be losing less than 50% each hour because something to the 24, that 24 hours, something to the 24th should give me 0.5 to the 1 because that's one day worth. 24 hours worth should give me that 0.5. So what to the 24 gives me 0.5? That base there will represent the hourly rate because there's 24 hours in one day. So to solve for x there, I'm going to raise this 0.5 to the 1 over 24. I'm going to take the 24th root of 0.5. So I could do 0.5 to the 1 over 24. Or I could do 24 math, option 5 for the x to the root of 0.5 and get that same answer there. So 0 0.9715, I'm going to say. So the base is really 0 0.9715 to the H. Every hour, that's the base if I want to use hours instead of days. This is my expression for P of H. That's P of H. I should say P of H equals there. So notice how I did this. I said there's 24 hours in one day. 24 hours in one day. So I said, I want to know the base for hours, so what to the 24th gives me the base for days? So what's the hourly rate of decay? Um, well, this is the, the subtraction problem where I do 1 minus 0 .7, 0 0.9715. I want to know how much I lost. So how much did I lose here? 1 minus 0.715. I lose about 2.85%. I lose about 2.85% because I'm keeping 27.15%. So how could I check this? How could I check that this worked? Let's find P of 24 where I'm plugging in 24 hours. What happens when I plug in 24 hours? I should get the same as if I did one day. So what's point? What's 0 0.9715 to the 24? It should be close enough to that base of 0.5 there. That's how I can check that I actually converted these units correctly. It's about 100 times 0.5, about. So that's how I know that that conversion actually works. So you just have to think about these problems of I want to know the base and try to see what the conversion factor is going to be. Um, 
some rule of thumb, never just divide that 0.5 by 24. You're always going to be doing some kind of power here. You're always going to be doing some kind of power, some property of exponents to clean this up. Number three, in New York State, the minimum wage has grown exponentially. In 1966, the minimum wage was $1.25 an hour, and in 2015, it was $8.75. Algebraically, determine the rate of growth to the nearest percent. So, I'm starting with $1.25. I want to know what the rate of growth is, so I'm just going to call that B. Um, how many years went by from 1966 to 2015? That's a change of 49 years. After those 49 years, I ended up at 875. So to solve this, I'm going to divide by that coefficient out front, like we did in the previous lesson, and get... 8.75 divided by 1.25, 7. 7 equals the base to the 49th power. So I'm going to raise, I'm going to take the 49th root of both sides, which just is weird, which is really 7 to the 1 over 49. That's how I'm going to type that in, just to practice rational exponents. I have a 49th root, that's a 1 over 49 power. That's my base there, 1.04. 1.0405. So my base equals 1.0405. So what is it growing to the nearest percent? Well, this is growth, so I'm going to ignore the 1. It's growing at about 4% every um, year. Deter determine the percent rate of change over a, a decade. excuse my typo there, decade to the nearest percent. So I don't want every, I don't want to know it every year. I want to know every 10 years how is it going to change. So I need to go from yearly to decades. So it's this number every year. It's 1.405% every year. Well, a decade is going to be 10 years. I want to know what's that base every 10 years. So if I take that number and raise it to the 10th, that should give me the rate of change for every decade. So that answer to the 10th. After 10 years, this is what I get, 1.4875. So I get 1.4875. So that tells me every decade we're growing by... 48.75%. Every decade I'm going to grow by 48.75%. Because I've got the yearly rate here, so if I want to know what it is every 10 years, I'm just going to plug a 10 into that exponent. If I was working backwards and I had the decade rate and wanted to get the yearly rate, I'd do a 1 tenth power on this side. So it depends if you want to make the, that base bigger or smaller, depending if you want to make the, the time period longer or the time period shorter.